right, hello again. Um, I just got done for in the moment on a mesh, the mesh compiler and the mesh format. The mesh format is pretty straightforward. It's a um, I decided to go over JSON this time around. Um, eventually, it this mesh format can hold not just one mesh but multiple meshes. So it's more of a scene kind of like format. Um, let's see here. Eventually, I will have it where it will support animations as well, but that will come later when I start polishing the game. Um, as you can see here, I have the document for version 1. I might do some changes to see if I can uh, make the, the format kind of more compact, but we'll have to see about that. Um, for the compile compiler wise, it's right here. I use Asamp to load up the mesh format, and then I grab all the data that I need from it. Which right now I'm just doing a basic static format slash scene system. Let's see here. Um, it will first open. The first thing we'll do will open up a any type of mesh file. Um, the ones I'm using are blend files, like this right here, and here's one, two, three, four, five, six different different ones. Uh, there's some quick temporary meshes I'm going to be using for testing. Uh, the project, when, when, when I can um, get around to use them. Um, as you can see, I'm just, I don't want to use this format directly. So, because um, I don't want to have another dependency on the, like, the engine itself, but I think it's pretty good to have a compiler that uses it. As you can see, this loads up the stuff that I need. Um, I'm using, I'm storing it using JSON's kind of output stuff. I like it, but at the same time, I kind of hate it because it it doesn't compact the uh, JSON, so the file size is a little larger than I want it to be. But the format itself is pretty clean JSON, so it might load up really quick. Alright, let's demonstrate this. We're going to compile every... S Here's where it's going to compile to. I'll show you this script real quick. I'll just open it from here. what the script kind of does. So let's launch it real quick. Not too slow, but I think it could be faster once I do the release build of it. Yeah, the major problem I have with its file size, I'll show you why. Um, let's see here. I'm not doing a mesh. So the smallest one. Yeah, it's not compacting anything. It new lines literally everything in this file. does it backwards, which is kind of strange, but I think it should be fine. Look at the bigger one, the Taurus. I might decide to convert this to a binary format eventually, so it won't waste a lot of space. I just gotta remember how to do it. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done binary stuff. I think this should work temporarily. Excuse me. I think this is it for this update. Um, the next one will be me rendering the mesh. Alright, 
this is the next update. I finally got done with mesh loading, and I was chasing a bug the entire time. <laughs> oh man, um, the bug had to do with um, me misspelling an attribute, which was uh, let's go to shaders real quick, which was this one. It was this, and hopefully this won't kill the program. I'll demonstrate it real quick. It should have been um, just normals. I'll show it real quick. Not normal. It should have been normals. And it was doing something like this. The cube was smaller. Sphere. Whatever this thing is, whatever this thing is, this should be a monkey face, and the cubes are smaller. What it was doing, it was looking at, um, it was utilizing the normals instead of um, the positions. So once you do this, Because it's normal, so it's how it's registered to the program set attribute. It works just fine. Come on, load. There we go. It's a sphere. Oh, it's a cylinder. Oh, it's a toros or a donut. It's a monkey face. And it's the same cubes, but bigger. <sighs> God, I <laughs> gotta love logic bugs, man. Gotta love them. But other than that, meshes are meshes are loading correctly. Um, if you press F1, you can view the meshes as um. In wireframe mode, I'm gonna keep that in for a bit, so I can make sure that these meshes are working as intended. Um, one thing I had to do, I went back through and um, did some changes to the uh, the mesh compiler instead of using the JSON stuff, which was creating huge files, I decided just to do my own, which uh, cut down the file size, the file size quite a bit. Um, let's see here, meshes. As you can see, it's not like almost a meg of data. It's like very, very small. And what it prints out, which I'll show you here, it's much more compact. So yeah, this is it for this update. Alright, this is another update. I just got done with the simple camera, camera system. Um, I did several changes. I'll show you real quick. <coughs> for one, I made it where um, the scene shader would take in a camera object, um, which basically kind of sets these two, but makes it a little easier, plus it's faster. Um, down here, toward the bottom is the camera itself. As you can see, um, it's pretty much this, the same type of camera I usually build for like any kind of test project. I've used this kind of design for a while, for the exception of including input mapping into the thing, which I'll show you. Let's see here. Oh yeah, here it is. I basically made a whole bunch of input maps for the camera, for running, moving forward, moving backwards, strafing left to right, and moving up and down. So you can configure it if you want to. Okay. 
page. I'll show you real quick. Um, these two are from the previous one, which I'll remove later. But I have input mappings for escape, toggle input mode, uh, running, moving forward, move backwards, strafing left, strafing right, moving up, which is moving on the Y, and moving down, which is moving on the Y down. And I still have the while f the the wireframe mode. So I guess let's demonstrate this real quick. Alright. Press the tab. Alright, you see you can move around the camera. You can look down, 90 degrees, look up. Let's and I'll move forward. To the right. Alright, there we go. You can do this. Press space bar, go down. Hill shift. And that's pretty basic. Yep, go to wireframe mode. Come back. It's pretty cool. It works. <laughs> Alright, this should end update number the camera update. Alright, this is an update. Um, this is uh, stack the stack terrain for the graphics um, issue. So let's run it real quick. I'll demonstrate it real fast. Let's go here. Come on. Alright, as you can see, my little friends from before and the camera to, from the um, camera demonstration are here. And you might notice that there's a big pretty big mesh above us. And that is the static terrain. <sighs> well, you might have noticed something kind of fit funny about it. This texture that I'm using is interpolated across the um, the entire terrain map. Um, I did that intentionally because I can pass the shader as scale factor and um, pretty much um, scale it to any kind of like base 32 number I want which I'm going to demonstrate right now how that works I don't know 8 see it looks the images look smaller and <sighs> it looks more kind of like a desert scene by just looking at it um, let's make it smaller again uh, I guess 10 here. Hmm. Let's switch this back to one, and we're going to use. Oh, we can just swap the textures here real quick and demonstrate this. Hmm. For winter day, my. Allergies have been acting up for some reason. Don't know why. Hmm. But then again, it's morning, and I'm always groggy in the morning. Okay, let's demonstrate this for fast. What I mean by the image is interpolated across the um, terrain map. Dun, dun, dun. <coughs> As you can see, the whole terrain is that angry face thing. They came a mascot known as Angry. 
Uh, it's definitely interpolated across the map, correct? So let's do that um, eight. The image is spread across the map eight times, which is eight by eight, so sixty-four of these angry face dudes. And they go higher than that. One twenty-eight. I can only assume that the face is across the whole thing 108 times. I mean, 128 times. So, yeah. I think the static terrain is working. to show the shader real quick which I exited silly me What I'm simply doing is it's pretty much the same as um, the scene shader, but the only difference is that I'm passing a new kind of value, this text scale value, and I'm simply multiplying the text coordinates. Um, when I'm generating the text coordinates in the geometry one, it's pretty straightforward to do. You just um, let's see here. Where the heck is it? Come on, where are you? Uh, here we are. You essentially take like um, the map or how big the image is when you're loading it. And then you divide it by the width. That will give you a pretty good um, interpolation value across the, the high map. I do this all the time for height maps. It actually makes it infinitely easier to scale the images. Because if you do it the alternative way, it takes longer to get a height map looking good. So just kind of calculate the, um, the text chords this way. It makes a me uh, handling um, height maps pretty easy. That's it for this update. Alright, this is an update. Uh, this is an update. Blech, I can't talk right now. Um, I just got done with multi textured terrain. So let's get to this. Um, multi textured terrain is basically you. you you're trying to like make the terrain look more interesting by adding textures to it. Um, let's see here. Uh, there's many methods. The one I'm using is using a blend map that takes, um, which is basically kind of like an RGB map. Let's see, uh, preview it real quick. As you can see, um, each edge of the blend map kind of mixes the colors together because I use a, um, a gushing blur with GIMP to give that blur effect and it allows for kind of interesting looking um, terrain. How the interface works for this is that I added in a blend, a blend map path to this file and then I have four different channels. One for a black channel which is basically the default color 
of the whole thing. A red channel, <coughs> a green channel, and a blue channel. Um, <coughs> I made it where you can just attach textures to it so you can keep textures separate from this. So that the only like texture map that terrain now manages is the um, blend map. As you can see, there's no release code for that. Uh, it's down here. Yeah, there's no release code. I'm simply just using pointers to get access to those textures. And then I bind them in the renderer right here using several different texture maps. Uh, shader wise, I added these parameters to the fragment shader. This will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm probably going to change this to, to utilize texture arrays eventually, just to make it easier. Um, there's probably a better method. I might test it in this video. Well, you first load the, the blend map, and then you load the, the corresponding um, kind of uh, channels and you do some mixing and stuff like that which I'm doing linear mixing because it's a pretty simple mixing algorithm and then you just set it to the color let's I guess run it real quick let's see here like this one run you and voila we got multi textured terrain let's take a look around Not bad looking terrain. For some reason, the, the dirt is blue. It might be a texture issue. I have to take a look at that. But yeah, doesn't look too bad. Um, like previously, let's go back to um, the gaming page. You can uh, scale the textures, as you probably saw from uh, this. Uh, let's have some fun with that real quick. Uh, I'm gonna make it ridiculously silly looking. If I can find my renderer, I need to start moving these to like they're separate, just a separate function or something. Oh well. All right, set that to be two. Set the one. Just for kind of laughs and giggles to experiment. Excuse me. <laughs> yep. This looks silly. As you can see, you can blend. It doesn't matter the scale of the textures. It will blend anything. Oh my god. Yeah, this... Uh, that's too small. Let's go, I don't know, 100. Not too bad. Still prefer 32. And there's one experiment I want to do real quick. Let's go back to 32. Yeah, I prefer 32. want to divide these by three. And 
and see if that will fix something. Because I noticed that it's, it's averaging those colors out. And I'm curious to see what will happen. Oh, that's what will happen. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> wow, it makes it glow in the dark. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Nah, we're not going to do that. And, uh, give a, uh, let's just undo that. <laughs> I was wondering why I wasn't doing an average. I kind of borrowed this from a different script. So I'm trying to I'm reanalyzing the script again. Let's see here. Uh, that should run fine now. Alright. Yep. I think this is it for this update. Got to do something. How do these channels work? <laughs> yeah, the... I forgot to demonstrate this. Um, let's swap Let's first play it real quick. Make sure it's built. And let's see here. Alright. It's doing the same thing. Um, let's change this to the my kind of um, logo for my channel real quick. So I want to demonstrate something. How this linear stuff works. That's probably the best image to use for this little experiment. This kind of demonstrates the blending of what I mean by linear blending. There's other functions that you can do. As you can see, what it does, it takes in, say, this texture on the left, which is my logo for my channel, and this grass texture, and it slowly adds and multiplies it until it gets out of the blend. That's what I'm referring to linear blending. I don't. I kind of forgot to show you this. The other cool thing about this is that you can s use similar textures on each channel. So let's make, um, I don't know, the ocean. No, let's do beaches with the angry face. I'm going to change this back. It looks kind of cool. <laughs> I like playing around with um, image blending. I got another question. Why aren't you nip mapping correctly? Yeah, well, I'll have to take a look at that. Alright, I just got done with procedurally generated terrain which that took a few days because I had to um, kind of remember how to do it. It took some time, but I did it finally. Let's see here, let's go to project. This is the game object. Uh, for the most part, the geometry portion of it is um, pretty much the same as just the static terrain. So the only difference is that you don't have to set height map the path to the height map or the path to the blend map for the multi texturing stuff. Um, I still got probably some stuff to do because um, I made it data driven. That's why it took so long. Um, you can implement several different um, waves for the terrain and for the moisture map. And you can set levels for like where the um, the ocean starts to the to the um, beach where the beach starts to where the forest starts. I'm gonna play with these values just to get it. Excuse me. To make it where the 
the island looks pretty good. I'm still working on it. Um, this won't be perfect for a while until probably when I'm in the polishing stage where I want to make sure the land just looks perfect. But I just wanted something, a land mass that I can use for testing. And this will be the perfect way to do it for now. Um, not this one, this one. All right. As you can see, I've also made a little test, which I could probably show that real quick. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Mm, yeah, I'm going to probably create this bug. An argument, and it's going to be terrain. Whew, that took a bit. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to do some optimizations for how it builds terrain, the terrain itself, because. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it builds a big, like, 1024 by 1024 terrain, so it takes a bit. Um, it's basically the same thing I did before. You have the terrain itself, you have the mask, and you multiply the mask by the original kind of um, noise, the noise kind of um, image, and then... I apply a um, uh, made a moisture map based off of it using my own stuff, and then you build the texture stuff. And this one's just the biome itself, uh, quads and uh, spherical maps are supported. So you can do either or. Um, let's see here. Let's get rid of that parameter. I think it's in the bag. Run properties. Get rid of you. I probably should just right click the project next time <laughs> if I'm thinking right now. And. Alright. As you can see, we have terrain. But this is from. This is procedurally generated terrain. So. It's not bad. It's kind of doing what I want it to do. I'm going to do this. See how uh, camera test is still down there. I need to get rid of that. But yeah, it's generating pretty good. Um, the only last thing I'm going to implement is just a simple water plane. Then this, this iteration should come to an end. I might be a little late how it goes sometimes. Oh, again, I finally finished, well, the wa simple water plane for now. Um, it's quite straightforward. Um, it's basically just a plane that has a water texture on it, and it has a small animation to make the water look interesting. Um, let's see here texture I'm using for it is a texture with water. Just a simple one from a whips uh, a place that gives you um, kind of free sample textures. They're all royalty free. Um, I'm probably going to buy all of the textures from the guy. It's like 25 bucks because they're actually quite nice textures. And I can, I can always use a texture library. I'll probably link um, his website in the uh, description just to give kind of his side of shout out. But yeah, finally got everything done, the graphics. Um, so let's go look at the code real quick. Um, let's put these together real fast. There we go. Um, the vert texture is basically the same as like the other ones for now. I don't have any extra stuff with it, but the biggest difference between this one and the other kind of fragment shaders, um, I added a time delta to move the x-axis and I scale it, so it gives you kind of a small little slow animation. Um, 
take a look at the game with CPP file. Let's see here. You got the updates down here. I just simply add the delta and then multiply it by 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001F. So it will go slower because it was going really fast with just the delta all by itself. Um, and if it's greater or equal to 1, it will subtract 1. So we're set the what the texture is, and it goes on forever. Let's see here. Um, for the most part, the code's quite straightforward. Um, so I guess let's run it real quick. It looks pretty much the same. We have the the same camera demo, which I haven't even made yet. And if you look up above us, there's some sort of water, and it's being animated a little bit. Let's go to the surface and check it out. Yep, just a simple water plane. Um, this will be replaced by something better later on, but achieves the effect that I want for now. Just something simple so I can um, utilize water for um, what happens when the player goes into the water and I'll be working on that mechanic without trying to create a very high-end looking um, water shader which I'll do later when I'm getting into polish. Um, there is an end to it so I'm going to fly this over here real quick. I think it adds a pretty nice effect to it. Not bad, not bad. Um, this is it for iteration one. Text to you. And so let's commit this, close this shoe. And for milestone one, we've completed it. The only thing I need to do now and iteration two will be for part two of um, the next part of the framework one the uh, framework because I had to kind of um, yeah, I had some additional things I wanted to do for Iteration 1, but the graphics uh, issue kind of um, took up all the time. So this next iteration, I'm going to be doing these four, plus a few other ones I'm going to add, which is uh, definitely optimizing the procedural generation. I need to do that because I cannot get any work done if I have to wait about five to six minutes to get the um, the game loaded. That's definitely a bottleneck I need to work on. I'm, I'll work on that next iteration. Um, but the that would probably be the first issue I work on is getting that optimized. But the next major issue will be when I start working on iteration two, it's going to be UE programming. And I think this is it. I will see you later.